Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to plants. And in today's video, we're talking about root bound plants and exactly what that means. And the reason why we're doing this video is because I think I've been asked this question like three or four times now in the last week. So I just find it so crazy that you guys are all about the root bound world right now. and. Many of you asked, can you please talk about the science behind root bound plants, whether they like it, whether they don't, and everything else in between. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So root bound plants, it's talked about negatively and then it's also talked about positively. So on the negative side, when we're talking about root bound plants, we're talking about a plant that is taking up the shape and size of our pot. And when we pull it out, it's the shape of the pot. Our roots are starting to wind around the bottom. And we usually are talking about in a negative light. So a lot of YouTube influencers or um, Instagram influencers will say this is a very bad thing. And this is when you know it's time to repot. The other way to look at this is from the perspective of when influencers or Instagrammers are talking about root bound and they're talking about it as a good thing. So in a good, good perspective, we're usually talking about succulents or cacti or snake plants, stuff to that effect that enjoys or likes being root bound. So the influencer is trying to curb your purchasing habits to get a smaller pot. So what's the truth? Is it good or is it bad? Well, what does the science say? If we're looking at it from a negative perspective, the number one sign and symptom you're going to see without having to pull the plant out of the pot to see if it's suddenly formed a pot is signs of lack of water or under watering. This is a sign that your plant is root bound and it's a negative way to look at it. Now, I think it's important to note that typically speaking, if a plant is in a potting soil that is too heavy, for example, a pure peat moss potting soil for something like an epiphyte or a such as an orchid or quite a few monsteras or philodendrons, roots that don't like compact soil, if we have this in a pure peat moss scenario, what will happen, especially if you have it in a terracotta pot, is all the roots will migrate outwards and then it will actually form the size of the pot. However, if you pull this plant out and you were to shake all the dirt off, you'd notice that there wouldn't be actually a lot of roots in the center and all the roots would have went to the outside. This has nothing to do with too small of a pot and everything to do with what that root or what that plant is looking for and that is air. So if you're noticing that your plant is starting to take the shape of a pot, it may be time to look at the potting soil you're using and think about something that may be a bit more porous. This can come in the form of things like orchid bark or coconut choir bricks, like the actual um, shell, or something like more pumice or perlite, things of that nature. So that's number one. If you see the roots on the outside, you're not noticing the wilting or the signs that there is some sort of water stress. It may be the plant and the roots doing their own thing, just trying to achieve the balance that it needs. If you are noticing wilting and the plant is looking very sad, there's a lot of root, not a lot of swell, you probably are actually root bound and therefore you need to repot your plants. This obviously is bad. The problem with this statement is that no plant is root bound in a bad way if you're able to provide the water and nutrients that the plant demands. So a plant that is crammed into tight quarters with very little soil can live without soil. It's what we see in hydroponics. It's what we see in LECA. It's what we see in such as those easy clone um, containers. All those are working on a soilless medium. So, so long as you're providing the water and the nutrients that that plant needs, you could technically keep it root bound for as long as you please. And if you're able to keep on top of it or you're micromanaging that plant, 
it's obtainable. You can do it. And this is very, very popular in those um, bonsai ball looking things, the kokuma, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. I think they're Japanese, but those ball things, those are probably root bound plants. Or in the case of bonsai, for example, bonsai trees, bonsai plants, those are root bound plants. It's an entire freaking tree in a small container. They are root bound. I can guarantee you that but it's the art of being able to deal with the bound roots appropriately. And that's giving it the proper balance of nutrition and water. So from a perspective of actually filling the whole pot up physically, is it a bad thing? No, not if you can keep up with it or you can make it work. So if something's looking a little bit of root bound, but you really like the pot it's in and you can manage the nutrient and the water needs it has, and there's no reason why you can't keep it in that pot. You will not kill the plant. What will kill the plant is if you forget to water it or you under fertilize or over fertilize because you don't have that soil. So you don't have that cation exchange capacity. So you've completely lost your bank for nutrients and therefore it's just pure salt floating around the solution. So you can harm the roots in that sense. The second way of looking at this is actually purposely putting a plant in a root bound scenario. And this is something that's heavily recommended by a number of YouTube influencers and a large number of Instagrammers as well. And they're not wrong in that sense at all. Because these plants don't have high demands for water or for nutrients, what tends to happen is if we root bound the plant, we have less soil. If we have less soil, then we have less water holding capabilities and less fertilizer holding capabilities. If we have less water holding capabilities and less fertilizer holding capabilities, well, you guessed it, you can't over water, you can't over fertilize, you can't over feed. And therefore plants tend to do better in that scenario. Now, if you want rapid growth on your plant, you're gonna want that bank or that reserve of soil. You're also gonna want that reserve of water. So if we're looking for exponential growth, we're going to want to hit somewhere in the middle. We're going to want a slightly root bound plant, root bound plant combined with a container that is large enough to hold the soil for that plant and its needs. I can't tell you what that size container is because it's gonna be completely based on the type of soil you have, the type of plant you have, and what kind of conditions you have that plant in. So do you have your snake plant under a grow light or in full sun, or do you have it in a shady location? If you have it in a shady location or you aren't exposing your snake plant to light, then you're going to want to have it root bound because that's how it's going to survive best. The reason for that is because the level of evapotranspiration is going to be lower. That lower evapotranspiration is completely and solely caused by the fact that the plant isn't getting enough photosynthesis to actually use the water in the pot, but simultaneously, we don't have the heat of the light or the sun beating on that soil surface that will then cause evaporation from the soil. So we're missing two main factors when it comes to that, meaning a smaller pot is going to preserve that plant for longer. Now, if you have it in a full sun scenario and you have it in a root bound pot, you're probably going to run into issues because you're not gonna be able to supply that plant with enough water to survive and thrive. So if you have it in a sunny location, you're noticing lots of rapid growth, it may be time to upgrade your pot and actually take it out of a root bound scenario. Regardless of what everyone tells you about that plant, the root boundness isn't so much to do with the preference of the plant, and it has to do more with what that plant is doing. On a technicality, every plant that is put in less than ideal conditions or in a shady spot will enjoy being root bound over being in a larger pot. However, that is in an ideal situation is not going to enjoy being root bound because it can utilize all the nutrients and the water in the soil system. The moral of the story is root bound good or bad? Does it exist? And the truth is it kind of does, but it kind of doesn't. It's completely based on what you're doing in your setup. So, if you don't have ideal conditions, which is what a majority of indoor plant people have is less than ideal conditions. You don't have the grow lights or you don't have the room, then root bound 
is okay. And that's what a lot of influencers are resonating with because that's what their crowd has. That's why they tell you to put stuff in a root bound scenario because they love it. It has nothing to do with them loving it. It just has to do with this fact that a majority of people growing plants don't have elaborate setups behind them. However, if you're trying to achieve rapid growth, big plants, and have it happen in a timely manner, and you do have elaborate setups such as the ones behind me, then a larger pot is actually what's in your best interest. Forget the root bound dialogue, throw it in the wind. It does not matter. It does not apply to you whatsoever because you are going to be watering and fertilizer, fertilizing based on what that plant needs, not on what you have made the conditions to be. I hope you found this helpful. Hopefully it wasn't too confusing. Root bound topic, gone rogue. I bet you've never heard it from that perspective before. If you have, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to meet up with that person. <laughs> I feel like we get along great. However, if this video did help you, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below. Let me, in the com let me know in the comments below what the number one takeaway from this video was for you. Share it with a friend. Let's dispel the myth of root boundness and its benefits because there really isn't any unless you're trying to do like a bonsai setup, I guess. That would be like the only benefit. Or if you have it in less than ideal situations, then it works great too because you can't get root rot if you don't have enough soil to make it happen. <laughs> I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.